Hello. We are live. Good evening and welcome to um, welcome to what we think is a, a unique event. It's the Vista Apex effort, uh, Jeopardy. And when uh, they contacted me and they said that they wanted to do um, not really a webinar, but something a little more entertaining with a little education mixed in. I was more than happy, and so I suggested that we do uh, a game show and make it a little bit fun. And we've got four amazing KOLs with us tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce them so we can get things going. First up, Dr. Joshua Austin. Josh is a San Antonio native who went to dental school in San Antonio, now practices in San Antonio. Josh writes the eponymous Pearls for Your Practice monthly column in Dental Economics, which his, it combines his love of obscure baseball lingo with his love of free dental material. So it's really perfect for him. It's a combination right in his sweet spot. We have Dr. Chad Duplantis with us as well. Dr. T Chad Duplantis went to dental school in San Antonio and then said he quickly got out of that cow town and got his AEGD at Baylor and now practices in North Fort Worth, Texas. Chad is a proud Xeric user who might just start the website xericdoctors.com. John Flukey is the technology editor of Dental Products Report and is in private practice in Lee Summit, Missouri. John has the distinction of being the most feared dentist in Missouri since he serves as the Missouri, Missouri State Peer Review Chairman. That's a lot of uh, weight to, to hold there. And lastly, we have Dr. Troy the Schmetzer Schmetting. Troy went to, went to what many people consider to be the country's leading dental school in terms of length of name, the University of the Pacific Arthur A. Dagoni School of <laughs> Dentistry. Impressively, Troy also has his accreditation in the AACD, and he now limits his practice to direct composite veneers. So, all right, it's very nice to have uh, all of you here with us tonight, and we've got actually two rounds of Jeopardy tonight. So, um, you know, when I heard that we had an intelligent group of uh, doctors and KOLs that were going to be here, I decided to come up with um, categories that I thought would fit into your uh, wheelhouse. So Ashley's going to go ahead and bring up those categories right now so you guys can take a look and see what they are. And if it's uh, if she continues to have a little issue here while she's having that issue. Um, Josh, uh, you have a story about curing lights for us that uh, I think is a sobering reminder of how we kind of take for granted. Oh, uh, Josh, enough of your story. Maybe we'll get to that later. Uh, uh, because we now have the Jeopardy board on here. So the categories uh, for our KOLs tonight. Go ahead, Ash. Parametric equations, Baroque concertos, molecular geometry, 16-letter words. Ukrainian sports legends and neoclassic architect. Wait, I'm being. Oh, I'm being told that is for the engineers. Yeah, put up, put up. Can you put up the one for the dentist? No, yeah, they're not regular dentists. They're, yeah, they're K, they're KOLs. All right, here we go. Famous leaning towers. Months ending in November. The number after two. Famous Oprahs. States that end in Hampshire <laughs> and twinkle, twinkle, little blank. Josh, the board is yours. No, uh, I, I I'll feel like states ending in Hampshire, obviously. All right. This state is the twin companion to pesky little Vermont. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, yeah. By the way, uh, we're, I'm actually sitting here at Vista Apex, a company built on innovation. And uh, we're here to celebrate the pink wave tonight, a pink curing light. You'll find out why it's pink a little bit later. This is not just a fashion choice. Josh, as you roll your light around, did you see those two little anti-rotation bumps that are on there? I do, right there. There we go. Yeah. So Josh's story is he had an assistant with a curing light that rolled off his countertop, fell on the floor and broke. She didn't tell anybody. She fixed the tip. And Josh had a whole month of composites and bondings fail uh, because the curing light wasn't working, even though blue light was still coming out. So those two little anti-rotation bumps that you see are there intentionally. So if you set down the curing light, it won't roll off and fell on the floor. There was a lot of trade show experience, how Vista Apex uh, happened to learn that. So our contestants tonight will be buzzing in uh, with their pink waves. And you'll learn later why it looks pink instead of blue like a typical curing light. But let's go ahead and get this started. Troy, why don't you go ahead and pick a category? Uh, let's go Shrinkage 100, please. Shrinkage 100. In a classic Seinfeld episode, 
George's friend Rachel walked in on him changing, looked down and laughed. George claimed it wasn't his fault, but he was a victim of shrinkage because of this. John. Uh, what is a cold swimming pool, Mike? That is absolutely correct. It was a cold swimming pool. I had a similar experience under an air conditioning vent during my vasectomy, but we'll save that for double jeopardy. Uh, John, the board is yours. Uh, let's go for, uh, let, let's stay with shrinkage for 200, please, Mike. Wow. I did not know you would choose that. Uh, many dentists select a composite with low shrinkage without realizing their curing lights play a role in their shrinkage. This new curing light, however, causes up to 37% less shrinkage of the same composite when compared to a traditional blue curing light. Uh, can you guys buzz in after the question? Go ahead, Chad. You were buzzing in frequently. I'm going to say the pink wave. That is correct. And we'll talk about uh, why later, but the pink wave, uh, pink differently is the motto. And one of the reasons uh, it is different is that it does cause less shrinkage of the, of the same composite. So most dentists don't take this into account. And we have to because composites don't shrink alone. They pull the tooth with it. And that can end up with post-op sensitivity. Um, go ahead, Chad, if you would go ahead. The board is yours. You know, Mike, I'm going to take a hair club for men. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, your last <laughs> dentist sounds amazing for 100, please. All right. These clues are all about, I think we've all had the experience of a patient coming in and just, uh, you know, describing their last dentist to us as though they uh, walk on water. And I'm glad, I'm glad people have that kind of opinion of, of dentists. But uh, so these are some quotes patients say when they walk in the office, quote, my last dentist used to do this all the time, unquote, but it turns out it's technically illegal and you aren't worth losing my license over. Yes, Troy. Uh, what is touch me inappropriately, Mike? What is maybe after the show, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is prescribed 30 Norco for a pro Mike? Uh, if you did it, Josh, might be uh, might be actually worth it. But uh, no, that's probably a little much. Chad or John, anybody can guess what this illegal? Yes, Chad, this is illegal practice. You know, I'm going to say that the dentist maybe just accepted the uh, the copay as payment in full. Yeah. What yeah, is exactly. accepted the copay as payment in full? Yeah, I, I'm not sure we're going to get that technical where it has to be in the All right. uh, sorry in the okay. format question. But thank you for uh, <laughs> complying to the format. But you're right. Yeah, we absolutely can't do that and get asked to do it all the time. And my last dentist did it. Well, good. Let me uh, call Delta and turn him in because that's illegal. All right. Go ahead, Chad. Or yours. Let's stick with the same category and uh, let's see what that last dentist did for 200. Even though I was referred for a root canal in February, my last dentist did this for me 10 months later in December. Josh? Uh, what is took me for $800 in a heated game of dreidel, Mike? <laughs> no, that was the second uh, most common answer. Troy? Uh, what is I came in on Christmas Day to extract tooth number 18, Mike? That's correct. The patient ignored the endodontic referral. Uh, the antibiotics made it go away. They let it get worse and worse and then dragged this poor dentist in uh, on Christmas Day, where we probably should have charged a couple thousand dollars to do the extraction. Troy, board's yours. Uh, let's go transillumination for 100. The reason transillumination is a category tonight is that uh, uh, there's a transilluminating light inside of the pink wave. 100 extra points to anybody who can turn it on real quick. First one to turn on the transillumination. Uh, Chad, it looked like you did, but John's looks more white. Give Fluky 100 points. Oh. Uh, Josh still at zero for those scoring at home. The loss of this technique led to increased difficulty in identifying incipient carious lesions, making transillumination a valuable adjunct to, these to identify these initial lesions. Josh, buzzing in because you heard the word lesions. Go ahead. Uh, what is actually looking at teeth? <laughs> With loops? No, that's a... Chad, ooh, that was scary. Go ahead, Chad. Good uplighting. Say the, uh, the fingernail against the enamel technique? <laughs> no, that's not it either. John, come on. You're uh, old school like me. What is the uh, slow speed uh, fine grain silver con versus conventional x-ray film? Yeah, that was the good old days <laughs> where the exposure time was uh, 14, 15 seconds long, and you could see exactly where the uh, decay went. You could see everything, and... Uh, you know, I guess it was a step in the right direction to lower um, the radiation, but we see less and less, and a trans illuminator can be a great help in identifying lesions looking down through a marginal ridge. John, the board's yours. Uh, let's go with uh, digging your wavelength for 
for 100, please, Mike. As we'll see later, there's actually four different wavelength pinks, uh, wavelength uh, peaks in in uh, the curing light. So um, the pink wave is actually able to cure everything because of this, and that's why uh, wavelength is a category. Dr. Joss Austin once told me the secret to getting onto any woman's wavelength was not asking her how her day was or sending flowers just for no reason, but rather this cologne described by its manufacturer as quote instant olfactory detonation an explosive concentrate of masculine sensuality. John, do you have the, that, those warlike metaphors? Do you know what this cologne is? Uh, what is high karate, Mike? <laughs> that is so close. Josh is just a little young for that. Come on, Josh. What's your secret? Give it away. What is Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf? That very good. Bonus for identifying the Germans who came up with it. That's right. Uh, Ashley, have you ever smelled Spice Bomb before? No. Never have? Oh, Josh, I should have a tester and, and see if it sends her into a crazy frenzy, as you claim it does when you walk into a bar. All right, Josh, you got that one right. Let's, uh, let's go on. Uh, let's go with uh, digging your wavelength for 200, Mike. Good choice. <laughs> Speaking of wavelengths, narrow spectrum curing lights typically have only one peak output at this wavelength, to trigger this photo initiator. Josh. Uh, what is camphor quinone or CQ? That is right, camphor quinone, CQ. And um, click on that, Ash, if you would. 470 nanometers. This is the typical uh, blue light that we all grew up with and we're used to. Um, a, a lot of uh, companies use camphor quinone in their composites because it's the most affordable one. But companies really aren't that transparent about which one they use. And that's why having four LEDs inside of a curing light like um, uh, the pink wave makes sure that you're curing any photo initiator that happens to be in there. Uh, Troy, let's go to you for the next selection, please. Let's go with trans illumination for 200, please, Mike. Thin tooth structure of these teeth easily transmits light, allowing visual visualization of lesions, cracks, defects, while accurate x-rays in this area can be difficult due to overlapping teeth. Troy. What are anterior teeth, Mike? That is correct. Uh, it, it, while transillumination works well on marginal ridges on posterior teeth, it's also fantastic on anterior uh, teeth as well. And Troy, go ahead and uh, pick again from the board. Let's go with hot follow for 100. Hot follow. These are um, dental influencers, I guess you would say. People who are worth a follow on Instagram uh, just to keep updated on what they're doing in their life and their practices. This Canadian dental hygienist has uh, a merchandise line and a startup dental practice. In Canada, Josh, go ahead. In Canada, my understanding is that hygienists can own and employ, own a dental practice and employ dentists. Uh, who are the bare naked ladies, Mike? <laughs> oh, so close. No, and it's not Anne Murray or the tragically hip. John? Uh, who is Dudley Do Right? <laughs> no, and it's not who is Rush, famous Canadians for not poutine. Go ahead, Chad. Yeah, you betcha. Who is uh, at Tooth Life Irene? <laughs> That's right. Irene, is it Ayanku? Is that Ianku. how you pronounce her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never had the opportunity to speak to her, but she's a good follow. Check out at Tooth Life uh, Irene. Chad, board's yours. You know, let's stick with the same topic for 200. Hot follow. This cat-like dentist... Watch Fluky grab his cat. I know it's, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> He's reaching for something. It's even better. Go ahead. Okay. This cat-like dentist, it refers to his name, uses and teaches biomimetic principles in his practice in San Diego. John buzzes in by squeezing the cat. Chad, yes? John Fluky. Oh, so close. Just <laughs> off by half a continent. <laughs> Sorry, John. Anybody um, know who this is in San Diego? Josh. Uh, who is Victor Cedillo Felix? That is correct. Dr. Victor Cedillo Felix. Felix being the clue. And John holding up. Felix the cat. Oh, Felix the cat. There it is. Now oh. I see it. Okay. Nice. It, it looked like the Georgia Tech logo for a second. I was confused. <laughs> uh, Josh, the board's yours. Oh, geez, Mike. Uh, let's take uh, shrinkage for 300. Let's. By using the pink wave and reducing the volumetric shrinkage of their chosen composite material, 
GPs can decrease this condition, which often has patients asking if their recently placed composite has decay next to it. Troy. What is the ever dreaded marginal staining? The ever dreaded marginal staining is correct. Even worse when it's on veneers in the anterior. Uh, Troy, so you did uh, direct composite veneers for your accreditation. Is that correct? Correct. Have you done them since? No. Okay, just check. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Troy, go ahead and pick. Uh, how about your last dentist sounds amazing for 400? All right. Quote, all I know is I used to see my last dentist almost once a year, and he never told me I needed Josh. Uh, what is a psychotherapist, Mike? <laughs> Troy. What are hair plugs, Mike? <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> I won't mention another speaker's name, but okay, go ahead, John. <laughs> um, what is... Uh... Having your upper lip waxed. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, save us. I'm going to say, what is all this work? Yeah. Have you heard that before? Uh, my last, uh, I saw my last dentist for 20 years, and he never told me I needed all this work. Uh, I just said you needed two composites. It's not that big of a deal. Get over it. Uh, Chad, board's yours. Let's uh, roll with translumination for 500 all right, here's the trans issue. Transillumination is also often used by GPs and this specialty to help identify root fractures and sneaky orifices. <laughs> uh, Josh, go ahead. You need to, there's Josh has certain trigger words that force him to answer it. In this case, it was sneaky orifices. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what is endodontics, Mike? Whoa! I, Whoa. Not, I mean, Whoa. no, seriously, can you tell me what endodontics is? Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, yeah. Josh went to the University of Texas at San Antonio, which the one time U.S. News and World Report ranked dental schools was the number one dental school in the country. And then the rankings just stopped. So I guess you I guess you'll hold that uh, position in perpetuity. He also went to a uh, health sciences focused high school. Did you not take alginate impressions in high school? We did. Yeah, we poured them up and, and did that all is insane. We got graded on how many bubbles we had. Yeah. <laughs> Could you just take Spanish like the rest of us? All right, Josh, board's yours. Uh, how about your last dentist sounds amazing for 500? All right. My last dentist was so good. He did this <laughs> procedure himself. Oh, John. What is having your upper lip waxed? <laughs> John, did you have your loops on today and see a patient where I get when I have my loops on during the injection, there's nothing to look at. So I'm fixated on nose hairs, uh, hairy moles. It's, a, I, it's a, it was like the loops are the original like pimple popping video where you can sit there and see like in 4X blocked blackheads on somebody's nose. I mean, it's, it's a freak show. I feel like you saw like an Italian grandmother with a hairy lip today and you're just you're stuck on this. But no, it's not a hairy lip. Who else buzzed in? Josh. Uh, what are 28 sealants, Mike? <laughs> They're a great value, except for the anterior teeth, Josh. Thing. Um, yeah, Troy. Ch Ch Troy. I'm going to take a guess. Um, Profi? Profi That's what right. Profi? He was so oh. good. He did the cleanings himself. I don't know if you've heard that before, but I can't think of a worse cleaning than from a dentist. Well, it's going to be with a handpiece and a finishing burr, right? I mean, we're not going to hand... <laughs> We're going to hand scale something. Um, all right, Troy, boy, it's yours. Let's go hot follow for 500. This West Coast dentist often posts pictures of his French bulldog, which has its own account at SF Dental Dog. Chad. Who is at SF Dental Nerd? That's correct. Shag and wagon, Brian Bollywood. <laughs> is that is that his nickname as well? What's the better follow, um, Brian or his dog? Does the dog have an account? I, I the dog does have an account. account. Yeah, does have an account. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess according to followers, probably Bollywood. I can't make fun of that because my cat has an Instagram account and Josh follows it. Um, John, does your cat Z have an Instagram account? Uh, he does not have an Instagram. All right. Account. 
Well, yeah. he was a barn cat, so I could see that the, our modern ways and would he, frighten and confuse him. With he's he has a, he has a really hard time without the opposable thumbs actually typing. So it's, 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 that's a good it. point. All right, uh, board is yours, Chad. Uh, let's go with transillumination for four hundred. I once used transillumination <clears throat> to diagnose this condition on my own dentist father after spending twelve months trying to localize his pain on biting to a specific tooth. Josh. What is an enlarged prostate? <laughs> <laughs> he once told me that the only two things, Fluky's at least halfway there. He once told me the only two things you need to be a successful dentist were gray hair for the look of wisdom and hemorrhoids for the look of concern. <laughs> so that you, when you were sitting in the chair talking to the patient you had this look on your face that looked you were being <laughs> like you're being empathetic john you're halfway there we don't need to know about the other uh 50 percent no okay. that wasn't it what is cracked tooth syndrome mike that's correct so my dad was a dentist for 35 years had a cracked tooth we couldn't find it we'd sit in the chair bite sticks tap on it percussion do everything every once in a while he would hit it just the right way and uh, finally we ended up using trans illumination to find that crack through the distal buccal cusp John, the board's yours. Oh, let's see. Let's go reusing disposables for 200. <laughs> this is a proud dental tradition that goes on. All these answers actually come to me from dealer reps who spend a lot of time in dental offices uh, pre-COVID. Now they won't see any of these awful habits. Though no dentist will admit it, it really sucks that dealer reps report <laughs> frequently seeing this disposable item floating in the cold <laughs> sterile. John. Uh, what is a condom? <laughs> um, we do have a topping in double jeopardy, barrier sleeves, where that answer is going to work a lot better. No, that's not correct. <laughs> Chad. What is, I, I usually stick my snap on smile in there, so I'm going to say snap on smile. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's it's not that either. Between patients, you're doing that every between every patient, you're putting that in there. Just at the end of the day, and I pick it up the next morning. Troy, what are dentists reusing? It's kind of disgusting. How about a uh, let's go with a high volume evacuation tip? Yes. yes. What's the what's the thinking here? It's not that dirty because only one end was barely in the patient's mouth. Or yeah, um, that bad. I don't know, man. That's 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 creepy. <laughs> Troy, the board's yours. Let's go with digging your wavelength for four hundred. All right. The pink wave has peaks at this many wavelengths. Sorry to give you the answer, which corresponds to the number of photo initiators used in dental composites. John, smartest guy in the room. Oh, what is the gray hair? What is the quad wave technology? That's correct. We would have accepted that, or we would have accepted uh, four different waves. So there's our normal blue light that you see around 470 nanometers. And then you see the red light that's next to it as well. And way on the right at about 850 nanometers, you see that near infrared um, LED chip that is part of the quad wave um, uh, assortment of chips. And the great thing about that is that it's the same technology that's in like um, the phaser for heating composites. And so when you use uh, the pink wave, you're actually heating the composite at the same time. So while you don't get the benefits of preheating a composite and then placing it like that, uh, you get increased uh, polymerization, higher conversion, and you get higher micro hardness on, on the surface and actually on the base of the composite as well. So it's part of what's added in there uh, besides the ultraviolet on the left. So yeah, there's four different peaks in the quad wave. And this makes sure that not only does it hit every known photo initiator in dentist, but you get some of those benefits of heating the composite without having to preheat it. Um, you can actually, it just heats on its own while you're actually curing it. Very good. Um, John, let's go to you for the next pick, please. Um, Mike, let's go for uh, transillumination for 300, please. All right. Transillumination with observation from the occlusal direction of these teeth often reveals the buccal lingual extension of lesions not seen in radiographs. Too late. No one got it. Answer, please. <laughs> Trying to keep them alive. It's pre-molars and molars. Oh. And again, oh. um, they're, they're oh, yeah, I know, I know. You, got, you heard of those? They're behind <laughs> the cuspids and in front of the condyle, right? Right smack dab in that sweet spot. Um, again, the transillumination is included in the curing light. So you don't have to buy one if you don't have it. You don't have to set it down and pick up another instrument. 
um, you can go ahead and use the transilluminator right from your curing line. I love two-in-one devices like that to do more than one thing. I got that right, so I'll pick the next category because I want points. I'll take digging your wavelength for 300, Ashley. While the prefix poly means many, polywave curing lights have peaks at how many wavelengths? Chad. I'm going to say more than one. Well... Yeah, that's that's uh, technically true. I'm looking a little more specific than that, Josh. Uh, what are two? What are two? That's exactly right. And but poly means many. You know, they're not polywave; they're biwave. You know, when I think poly, I think polyester or polygon or polyamorous, which is a weird thing. That's a thing now, right? Polyamorous. When I was growing up, that was just called cheating. But now, now it's like, oh, honey, I forgot to tell you, I'm polyamorous. <laughs> I meant to mention that in our <laughs> vows, and it slipped my mind completely. Josh, the board is yours. Uh, I'll take shrinkage for 400. Yeah, you will. When excess <laughs> volumetric shrinkage occurs at this area of the restoration, it almost guarantees recurrent decay. By creating a bacterial autobond in an area patients can't or won't keep clean. Josh. Uh, what is the perineum, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Again, do you want, are you asking what? <laughs> uh, no, I would actually like. Uh... Uh, I'm going to, I'll uh, I'll send you a diagram. Yes, Chad. I'm going to say at the uh, gingival margin of the proximal box. Yeah, that is, that is it. And actually, we had a big conversation about that today. Uh, a new product coming out from Vista Apex that is going to allow you to tell your patients not to floss. Well, not really, but that's the way I like to think of it, because that, that's the kind of resistance you get to recurrent decay uh, when you pair this bonding agent and this composite uh, together. Chad, board is yours. Let's go with hot follow for 400. All right. This Charleston dentist also teaches courses name Impress and might have the most impressive nails in dentistry. John, go ahead. Uh, who is Amanda Say? Oh, wow. Yeah, straight answer from John. Awesome. I thought he was going to say, I don't know, his cat or something about the nails. Yeah, Amanda. Um, I watched her. Uh, we kind of did like a little hands-on uh, demonstration together. And uh, she's amazing what she could do with the world's greatest um uh, manicure at the same time and just talent uh, dripping from her hands. But um, I've seen, I think, her post several times about her her manicures as well. So I know she uh, takes that seriously. But yeah, that's Amanda, uh, teaches out at the, the Coy Center as well. John, uh, board's yours. Um, let's go reusing disposables for 100, please. This item, though called disposable, will definitely get used six or seven times and lose 15% efficiency with each use. John, yeah, I know, my son. Um, what is a condom? <laughs> I, I, I will promise you this, John, technology editor of DPR, but you are. Um, if you keep saying that enough times, I think it's going to be right in double jeopardy. Um, who buzzed in? Sorry, Chad, was that you or Troy? Troy. Uh, What's your uh, jeopardy, uh, Mike? What is a disposable burr? That is correct. <laughs> Dentists just, um, you know, they're much cheaper because they're disposable, meant to be used once. But you know what, dentists, they put a zero on the back of that. And uh, until they smell actual burning or see brown lines on the tooth, they will continue to use that. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, reusing disposables for 500, please. This one's just weird. Um, and what can be seen as the ultimate irony, staff members have reported to have been forced to reuse this indicator of sterility. John, don't bother. I know what you're going to say. I'm not accepting your buzzing, John. I'm sorry. Uh, on, on just uh, on moral grounds. Josh, oh, way, way to go to him on moral grounds. Go ahead, Josh. What are sterilization pouches, Mike? Oh, thank you. I like when Josh plays the straight men. God, Josh, go ahead and pick. We're almost done with this uh, initial Jeopardy round. Uh, give me reusing disposables for 400. All right. The plastic version of this two-in-one device is meant to be disposable by the manufacturer, but there are <laughs> dentists who say that is a lot of hot air. <laughs> John, I... Uh, what is a uh, disposable air water syringe tip? Oh, thank you. Yeah, especially the plastic ones, right? And uh, getting used... Uh, 
over and over again meant to be disposable but unless it literally self-destructs in the hands of the dentist it should just kind of dissolve it after it's got like 10 minutes of water going through it john the board is yours uh, let's go with your last dentist sounds amazing for 300 please mike okay my last dentist was so great that he even did this. Troy, buzz in for me so I can apologize for this. Uh, quilted on the weekends, Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty great, but no. John? <laughs> I waxed my upper lip. Yeah, that's with a condom. That I know. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> Josh? Uh, what is did like I did and teach at the dental school half a day a week? <laughs> yeah, or one day a week. And I oh, used to okay. hear this because it was, uh, and I, Troy, I know you teach at our alma mater. I think one day a week. I don't know how often actually you do it. Um, but this was, I used to hear this Actually zero right now. What's that? Actually zero right now. But Oh, zero. Oh, this was just yeah. SC, SC grads would constantly. They, it's like they did it 10 years ago and they still, and their patients were impressed. Because that was back when like dental, dental school instructors were not necessarily on the cutting edge of knowledge. It's, it's really changed today to see how many um, university uh, dentists are, are KOLs and right in the middle of things. Uh, Troy, go ahead and pick for me if you would. A hot follow for 300, please. All right. This curious dentist is also the editor-in-chief of Dental Economics Magazine. John? So my, uh, my good buddy, Dr. Chris Salerno, who is my good buddy, Dr. Chris Salerno. That's good. I thought you guys might have publication beefs with you being a DPR. The great um, you know, Dental Magazine Wars of the 80s with shootings at Penwell and just you know the people going after each other. Um, what is he curious about? Josh, you know him pretty well. John, you know him. I think he's curious about a couple of things. One might say he was bi-curious. Oh, uh, he's curious so, yeah. about dentistry. He's curious about traveling. Yeah. Um, I guess tri-curious. He's he's also into food and wine, so that would yes. be sort of three things that he's curious about. Yeah, I've gone to dinner with him. Very, very into food and wine. Uh, John, board is yours. <laughs> oh, let's uh, let's go with shrinkage for five hundred, please, Mike. All right. Reducing volumetric shrinkage, especially in bulk fill composites, can help to eliminate this condition that can cause patients to lose confidence in Josh, their dentist, and can cause dentists to leave dentistry to become a barista. John. What, what is the ever popular post-operative sensitivity? That's correct. And then patients always try to relate it back to, it's like, well, when did the pain start? And they're like, as soon as you put that crown on. And I'm like, yeah, that's uh, okay. But let me ask you a few other questions. Have you been in any car accidents lately? Uh, do you eat a lot of cinnamon? Are you lacking? You know, I just it started asking questions. No, it was pretty much. I know it seems like a causal event, but it's studies show it's more coincident. So, yeah, we can see that composite there. And then when you cure it, obviously, because of the bonding agent lining the cavity prep, it's got to go somewhere. And nobody's invented a no shrink composite yet. And so we have to deal with this. And actually, the faster you cure something, the more of this stress you you put on there. And so there is this concept, and we'll talk about pulp heating later. But it's not necessarily, hey, let's cure this thing in one second and be done with it. Nothing worse than post-operative sensitivity. Uh, Chad, go ahead. We've got two left. Oh, uh, let's go with reusing disposables for 300. The reuse of this disposable item is not very hygiene Ick. By the way, I love people who pronounce hygienist instead of hygienist. <laughs> Joshua? It's got to be a profi cup, Mike. What is a yeah, profi it, cup? Yeah, what is a profi cup? Again, are you just, I, every time you say that, I think you literally want to know what is a profi <laughs> cup. And, and Josh, why don't you finish us out with this last clue? I'll take digging your wavelengths for 500. Okay. <laughs> Upon reading an unjustified negative Yelp review from a patient who wasn't digging his wavelength, Dr. Josh Austin put a hole in his bedroom wall with this object. <laughs> Chad. What is his previous curing light? <laughs> that, that is uh, props for the callback. Good Lord. I didn't even finish that story either. Uh, good. Give, him a, give Chad 100 points for a callback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody besides Josh? Josh, what did you put through the wall? Uh, what is yeah. my iPhone, Mike? What is your iPhone? Oh. And what is, uh, click on that. Oh, I don't know if that'll get big enough. 
There it is. It's certainly big enough. Yeah, it's an iPhone shaped hole in Josh's heart. <laughs> And Josh figured out who it was, which was the the funniest part. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do uh, – let's go on to Double Jeopardy. Uh, what are the scores? Chad's got 2,300, John 2,700, Josh 2,900, and Troy at 1,800. But, Troy, I, I know you're going to I know you're gonna pull back on this. The, uh, the categories for Double Jeopardy, Pulp Friction. Uh, the answers in this category are either Pulpal Irritants or Quentin Tarantino movies. Uh, Columate this, questions about collimation. Uh, your insurance sucks. Things that um, we, we bill for all the time and insurances just laugh at us. Does size matter? We'll talk about the pink wave and how it compares to other curing lights. Barrier sleeves, a category created just for John Fluky. This category, the answers in here are either about infection control products or safe sex practices. And lastly, we have uh, Vista Apex, our fine sponsor tonight. A few uh, answers about the, this fine company. Um, Troy, you're play, coming from behind. Go ahead and pick first. Uh, let's go. Does size matter for 200, please? This dental parody game show host has been repeatedly assured that it's the magic in the wand rather than the actual size of the wand that matters. John. Uh, who is Dr. Mike Detola? Yeah, that 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 is true. That I I uh, I've heard that a lot. Uh, it's my own probably insecurity. Uh, I will never pose. Um, you'll never see me posing next to a ruler. I don't have that kind of uh, self confidence unless it's um, an endo ruler. That's the only way I'm getting to double digits. Uh, John, go ahead. The board's yours. Um, let's go with does size matter for four hundred, please. The pink wave weighs half as much as this popular curing light. Chad? What is the Velo Grand? What is the Velo Grand? That is correct. And uh, you probably can tell right now that it's kind of light. Um, there's a little video I want you to see. Uh, this is Nick Pond, um, who uh, one of the marketing guys here at uh, Vista Apex. And uh, he and Mandy had an idea that they would tie uh, 11 helium balloons to the pink wave and watch it float away David Blaine style into the, into the clouds. And then the same 11 balloons tied to the Velo Grand, and we get failure to launch. It's not going up. <laughs> Nick's setting his calendar to and it. It's only 88 grams. Uh, does it matter? Well, you hear a lot of dentists who don't want to use electric hand pieces because of how heavy they are. So whether it's smaller hands or musculoskeletal issues, there's something to be said for having a lighter weight to an object we're going to be holding the most of the day. Um, like the pink wave. John, go ahead. You're up next. Oh, let's see. Um... Let's go Pulp Friction for 200. Pulp Friction. This pulpal irritant is most likely the result of that whack, no-name woodpecker curing light that you bought on the dark web. Josh? Uh, what is uncured resin composite, which I have a Un month of experience with? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to finish up Josh's story, yeah. Well, I, we kind of told it anyway, but yeah, his assistant uh, is no longer working there. Didn't want, he's ever uh, twisting the styrofoam? I mean, the uh, the cellophane we can hear. But Josh, you know, ha had an assistant who didn't want to be, you know, fess up to breaking the curing light, and the light was coming out of it. It looked like it was fine. All the failed restorations for what? How many restorations was it, Josh? You had to replace. Uh, it was about a hundred direct restorations and eighteen to twenty crowns. Uh, uh, just, just, just sickening. Wow. Um, like to go back and see the Yelp reviews after that. God, who knows what he was launching through the uh, wall then? Uh, uh, iPads, iMacs, uh, golden doodles, you know, a golden doodle size hole in his uh, bedroom wall. Um, yeah, and you just can't afford to do that. Josh, obviously, that's when you got really into radiometers and became obsessed with checking wow. the output of your, your curing light. And it's just, it, it's a matter of, you know, always making sure it's working just because the light's coming out doesn't mean it's working. I used to joke with my dad. He never used a spore strip to test his sterilizer in the 20 some years before we started practicing together. I said, well, how'd you know if your sterilizer was working? He said, well, when I flip the switch, the red light comes on. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's not kind of like not using a, a radiometer. Uh, mm. Troy, go ahead. You're not. Uh, let's do pulp friction for 400. An intercardiac injection of epinephrine was necessary to counteract the effects of a heroin overdose. John. What is Pulp Fiction? That's correct. Just one letter off. Great scene in that movie, by the way, as I was looking it up. They filmed that all backwards, so they started with yep. the syringe on the chest. And then and, pulled uh, it away. And, 
and pulled it away and then and then ran it backwards because I always wondered how they were able to uh, do this. Josh, you're next. Uh, I'll take column eight this for 200, please. All right. Oh, look at Josh picking his own clue again. Dr. Josh Austin once made the cover of San Antonio Magazine, although it wasn't for his excellent clinical skills or his philanthropic work. Rather, it was for being part of this hotly debated top 10 list. Chad? What is the 10 most eligible bachelors in San Antonio list? Yeah, that is. We have a shot of that, Ashley. Can you click on that? Look at the first line of this article. How creepy is this? <laughs> Joshua Austin wants to help you sleep better. <laughs> you come. You combine that line with Spice Bomb, <laughs> and you just might get arrested. Is what might happen. Yeah, Josh, that was uh, to, to that was quite defense, an honor. It was when I was in my sleep apnea phase. Oh, that's what. Oh, that's what you're referring to. I got it. Now I get it. Josh, go ahead and pick. I feel bad. You had to pick your own clue. Oh, geez. How about your insurance sucks for two hundred? <laughs> How about it? This procedure is often denied by insurers who are happier to pay for a procedure that preps both adjacent virgin teeth to turn them into abutments. Yes, Roy. Uh, what is an implant crown, Mike? That's absolutely correct. I'm happy to say during my time at Glidewell that we saw three unit bridges steadily uh, decrease in the days of trying to talk a patient into prepping those two adjacent teeth. It was just so sad to do it. And by the way, I don't know the name of the dentist or the person, but props to whoever decided we would get paid as much for a ponic as an abutment. This is one of the real heroes of dentistry. I mean, there's other heroes, certainly in dentistry, have done a lot. But whoever decided that gets paid the same, God bless them. We get screwed on almost every corner, but that one, that's one, that's one for us, one for status. Uh, Troy, go ahead. Your insurance sucks for 400 <laughs> Although code 3120 is meant to be used occasionally, there are some clinicians who place one of these under all of the direct restorations. John. Uh, what is an indirect pulp cap? Yeah, exactly. And you know who that was? That was my dad I'm speaking about right here. <laughs> Go ahead. Come at me, dad. Shots fired. Uh, actually, Delta Dental showed up at his office to like, audit his charts because he was putting an indirect pulp cap under everything. I don't even know. Can you put like under a sealant? I mean, is that an indirect pulp cap anytime there's a little dentin exposed? Do you have to be within two millimeters? I don't even know what the definition is anymore for an indirect pulp cap. Uh, John, go ahead. Uh, let's go insurance sucks for 600, please. Good luck getting paid for 4346, whose procedure description sounds like a common occurrence in most offices. Try, if you get this word for it, I'll love you for this. What is scaling in the presence of generalized moderate or severe gingival inflammation? Yes, Whoa. very nice. Wow. Very Whoa. nice. Click on that, Ash. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Oh, actually, that might be around those crowns and veneers. All right, we might have created that one. Uh, that uh, Maybe we can't blame the patient. But isn't every profi we do kind of like that? Moderate, I mean, there are some true prophylactic cleanings. John, you want to chime in on me saying prophylactic? Uh, <laughs> For, <laughs> not, not at this point in time. Basically. All right, all right. You reserve the right to throw that joke out again, though. I, 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 I do, I do. All right, uh, Troy. Let's go. Let's get you to 3,000. Apex for 200. All right. Vista Apex was formed in 2019 through the combination of these two legacy companies. Uh, Chad was first. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure that you can see my light because you've passed me over about the past six times. However, oh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark here, and I'm going to throw out possibly Vista and Apex. Wow. Wow. It, now, now that I know that you've got that kind of game, Chad, wow. you will be getting called on a lot more. In fact, control of the board is yours. Let's go with Vista Apex for 400. <laughs> Vista Apex manufactures award-winning adhesives such as Surpass and Regen, which all continue to advance the groundbreaking work of this pictured pioneer. Josh? Uh, who is Gary Vardaman Black? <laughs> well I mean, no it wasn't gv but was gv black's first name gary i'm pretty sure it was gary yeah I, gary that doesn't seem that doesn't seem right i don't feel like he'd hold the same stature of uh 
hey man, did you check out Gary Black's Seven Steps of Cavity Preparation? <laughs> Dude, it ends with toilet to cavity. It's hilarious. Troy, go ahead. Who is Gordon Christensen? <laughs> no. <laughs> go ahead. Old white dudes for 800. Yes. Go, go, Chad, go ahead. I saw that one. I, I'm going to go with Mike Miyazaki. <laughs> oh, oh, a digitally aged Mike Miyazaki. Is that what you thought we were going for here? Uh, I'm Sabas. sorry. I didn't see the picture. I apologize. <laughs> oh, John, John Sabas. Uh, who is Dr. Ray Bowen? That's right. Ray Bowen in San Diego. A dentist sitting on his back porch coming up with uh, BIS GMA. And deciding, looking at a, a chemical that had uh, urethane molecules on the end and wanting, or acrylic and wanted to switch them out with methacrylate and bonding was born and dentistry has never uh, been the same since. Um, John, this is your sweet spot, baby. You're next. I, I, uh, I just want to say that I, I do think it was Giorgio uh, Black uh, <laughs> instead of Gary, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, gosh, I feel the need to go with barrier sleeves for 200. All right. By the way, Pierre Fichard told me to just call him Pete. So that's what, I mean, I just, I've shortened that. According to a YouTube video I once saw, this object found in a dental office can be turned into a condom. <laughs> Chad? Uh, would it be an Optrigate? Ooh. <laughs> wow. That's uh, that's an interesting challenge for charity. John, you are next. Uh, what is a sterilization pouch? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn does, and I guess the stripe changes when. Okay, yeah, go ahead. It's yeah, sterilization. Josh, yeah, Josh, go ahead. Now, what is a finger cut, Mike? Uh, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Your answer to this question, Josh. Try it. <laughs> I'm going to go out of the land and go with the rubber dam, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I felt like that was super obvious, guys. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I really felt like I was uh, T-ball. I was putting on a T for you guys. Go ahead, Troy. Let's do barrier sleeves for 400 <laughs> This condom's name is somewhat of a misnomer since it's actually made from the Sika, a pouch <laughs> at the beginning of its large intestine. Uh, yes, Chad. What is a lambskin? condom that is correct <laughs> that is correct. it's not actually lambskin so you're like oh phew i thought we were killing lambs for this no we're just disemboweling them for that. That's, um... but is that worse putting i don't know putting putting an intestine on ashley's not ashley's not happy at all about that uh troy go ahead uh collimate this for 400 please this is the act of narrowing a beam of waves so that the direction of motion becomes aligned in a specific direction. John. What is collimation, Mike? That is correct. That was the answer was right in the title of the category. There's an uncollimated beam, by the way. This is what x-rays used to be like in the old days. You guys remember the super scary x-ray heads that were just pointed? like in the old days before there was actually a tube. So what's the issue with an uncollimated curing light like this? Well, you know, it turns out when you you, you look at the different wavelengths where, and peaks uh, of output in a curing light, they have affinity not only for photo initiators, but hemoglobin, an oxygen-rich hemoglobin, and protein, and dentin. And so it's very possible to overheat adjacent tissue. So it's kind of a waste of light to be on the tooth and curing the surrounding tissues, but it's also bad for them as well. So collimation makes sense here as well. Uh, John, you're up. Oh, we see Z. We see Z the cat on your yep, shoulder. Yeah, Z the cat is back. Yeah. Um, let's go with uh, collimate this for 600, please. Z's into collimation. All right, John, get a. I mean, uh, Josh, get a golden doodle in the room if you're able to. A perfectly collimated oh. beam from a curing light would look a lot like this common household item. John, you're not allowed to answer. <laughs> yes, Josh. Uh, what is a roll of paper towels? Wow. Thank you. Very good. And I'm going to show you what a roll of paper towels looks like since you haven't been to the store in quite a long time. But we're also going to click over to the image to show you kind of what, what I'm trying to talk about. Um, if you click on it again, Ash, and then uh, click that arrow and then pull that up. So that is the um, collimation beam uh, of the pink wave. So it's not quite perfect. What we're looking for is literally a cylinder straight up and down. And so we see from low power to high power all the way up. So you would like it to be a perfectly straight beam. It's actually a little safer to have it be a little narrow like that. So we're not getting surrounding tissues. But we also want a plateau like you can see 
up at the top of that. And we'll look at some uh, other collimation beams for curing ice um, a little bit later. Um, Chad, the board mm. is yours. You know, let's go with uh, pulp friction for 600. How's that sound? Let's do it. Direct pulp capping with this material intentionally irritates the pulp to form secondary dentin, which research shows works about 60% of the time. Chad. What is calcium hydroxide? Yeah. The good old days. Dical. Copalite. It was a much simpler time. We, weren't, we didn't wear gloves. There were no... Um, okay, anyway. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Troy go ahead and pick this next one. I'm going to go with Vista Apex for 600. All right. Ashley Stanford, her, oh, she got her head down, uh, is the newest member of the Vista Apex team and leads quite an athletic life by the looks of her Instagram account. I'll say. <laughs> her username is uh, Surf Dive Ash, if you want to follow her. Several years ago, Ashley dislocated her shoulder while attempting this extreme sport. Uh, Chad. Let's go with four-handed dentistry. <laughs> uh, you're, uh, I'm sorry. We would have accepted six-handed dentistry. Oh. Uh, Josh. Uh, what is competitive Peloton, Mike? Competitive Peloton. Uh, you mean indoor cycling? But for – yeah, no, that wasn't it. Uh, Troy. Uh, let's go with cornholing. Well, let's go with – let's make cornhole. let's make that a, a noun and not a verb and say what is cornhole, which is crazy. These are the cornhole athletes that I think of when I think of, of cornhole, that barrel chest. Well, he's not barrel chested. He's not – but he's not like – I don't know. It's a weird spot where he has that lump. These are the people who you expect to have an accident from that. But there was – I was looking – as I was looking at cornhole, I was going into a cornhole rabbit hole as it was. And I found this from a Michigan – Sports Association, an oh. athletic club. They had a cornhole tournament, and this was the cover of their brochure. So I, I don't know what to say about this. I don't know if this, you know, you know, Josh, how the NBA has like the Jerry West logo, you know, the outline of Jerry West. I don't know if this is the cornhole logo or what what this assumed position is, but um, cornhole is very foreign to me. Josh, which of your which of your golden doodles is that? This is Fig, and your other one's Graham. Yeah, Fig and Graham. Yeah, Fig and Newton or Graham and Cracker are the correct answers, yes. but that's okay. You, you, we'll give you half credit for getting one of uh, the names right. Um, John, the board's yours. Uh, let's go – I love Quentin Tarantino. Let's go Pulp Frick, Friction for 800. All right. Uh, the song Stuck in the Middle you, with You was played in heavy rotation in dental offices in the 70s and my mom's station wagon, but is better known today as the ear removal anthem from this film. John. What is Reservoir Dogs? Yeah, Reservoir Dogs. What a what a great what a great scene. I love that. Um, love that scene. Love Quentin. In fact, go ahead. Why don't you finish out that category, John? If you'd like. Uh yeah. Okay, you don't even have to request it. It just happened. There you go. Though, te <laughs> though technically not a, an irritant, unless you are lactose intolerant, milk is the drink of choice for a chatty Christoph Waltz as he interviewed a French dairy farmer in the riveting opening sequence of this film. Josh. Uh, what is Inglorious Bastards, my favorite movie? That is, is that your favorite movie? And I, Chris, Christoph Waltz in that movie is literally the greatest performance I've ever seen on screen. Okay. Because like three weeks ago, you told me you had another favorite movie. <laughs> what was it? Oh, it was, uh, shoot. Do you remember? We were talking and I was like, um, it wasn't Back to the Future, even though you're obsessed with that. And you, end up on, you don't remember what your favorite, you change favorite movies. Favorite well, implies singular. What's your other we, one? Do you remember? Uh, probably Shawshank. Like that, oh, that's what it was. It was Shawshank. Yeah, it was yeah. Shawshank. All right, I'll take Josh's favorite movie for 800, Mike. <laughs> Josh, go ahead and pick. Uh, does size matter for 600? The Pink Wave has dentistry's largest curing light head, which assures effective curing across the entire restoration with this diameter. John. What is 12.1 millimeters, Mike? Oh, yes. Perfect. I like that you knew it down to the tenths of a millimeter. And there's the Velo Grand. There's the Velo. And I don't even, what's that other one? What's the Cielo Lux? I've never, what's that buckle pit curing light? I don't know what that, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that one is. Um, Chad, let's go back to you. You're on the board. You know, let's go with barrier sleeves for 600, please. Let's do that. This is the largest barrier sleeve currently manufactured. Josh. Uh, what is a Trojan Magnum? <laughs> 
Uh, no. <laughs> Close, though. Somebody? Somebody save us, Chad? I'm going to go with the dental chair sleeve. Yeah. Do you, who uses this? Show of hands. Who actually puts the sleeve over the entire chair? No one? The, uh, Troy? Chad? No? You guys go bareback? No. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, Troy, the board is yours. Um, let's do collimate this for 800. Okay. Many curing lights have collimated beams that allow them to output 100% power, zero millimeters from the tip, but the power drops off the farther you get from the light. The pink wave is collimated so that it's beam peaks and plateaus at this distance from the tip. Oh, Josh, I know Josh. Go ahead, Trey. Uh, what is five millimeters? <laughs> that is absolutely correct. Good Thank for you. you. I can't believe the KOLs read the... Uh, read the literature we sent to them. So look at this. When you look at this comparison of curing lights, some of them are at, if you look at that upper left-hand corner, they're at 100% output, zero millimeters from the curing light. So there, that implies you're going to take, I guess you prep the cusps all the way down to the occlusal surface and then put the composite in and then set the light directly on top of the composite. If it's hitting the cusp tip, it's two or three millimeters away from the composite anyway. And so having it be uh, peaked and plateaued at five millimeters um, is fantastic because it's a more realistic distance. And then it continues that out to 10 millimeters because we know there's times where you have to get 10 millimeters down. So power always drops off and some of the lights, you know, peak at zero millimeters, but we're never, we put barrier sleeves on, but it's very rare that we're actually in contact with the composite itself. All right, Troy, finish off uh, this category if you'd like. Let's do that. Call mate for 1000, please. The pink wave seen on the left shows near ideal collimation with a consistent beam and no hot spots. The light on the right, however, does not have near ideal collimation and suffers from these two common clinical problems. Josh, I think you were first. Oh, what is an inconsistent beam? That is. And what else, Josh? Uh, hot spots. Yeah. See that? See on the on the right that that view from the top where you can see over there on the left hand side that it's got some hot spots. So that's the pink wave over on the left. And I hate that we're picking on the, <laughs> the Velo Grand so much, but that's the Velo Grand on the right. So you can see that one peak that it's got, and then those step downs, not a true plateau. And then you can see kind of the, the thinness of, um, it looks like almost a, a 3D printed thing instead of how solid um, the collimation is over on, on the left. And that's the power of quad wave of four LEDs. All right, Josh, you're up. Collimate this for 800. <laughs> We already did that one. You did that one? We did that. Your one. insurance sucks for 800. Okay. <laughs> Although absolutely necessary to determine the fate of a tooth, you have a better chance of winning the lottery than getting paid for code 460. 0460. Chat. I'm going to go with uh, what is pulp vitality testing? Yeah. And how, how can we not get paid for that? I mean, I know it's not more than some frozen water in an old carpet with some dental floss hanging out. I mean, I know it's not like a cone beam or anything, but uh, it would be nice if we could bill for something like that. But why even have a code? I mean, that's kind of the point is why have a code for that. And I feel like we're doing that like all the time. I mean, before you prep a tooth, you're like, is this numb? And then you, you should be able to bill it there too. Okay, Troy, go ahead. Let's go with your insurance sucks for a thousand. You can do four crowns or remove four impacted wisdom teeth in one day and get paid for it. But for this procedure, code 4342, needs to be done over at least two weeks to get paid. John? What is scaling and root planning? Yeah, what gives? <coughs> yeah. What gives? Yeah. I mean, you, you can do full mouth extractions and, and get paid for it. But no, not, not all the scaling and root planning in one day. John, go ahead. Um, let's go with barrier sleeves, my favorite category, 800. <coughs> this sleeve can keep unwanted fluids and debris from sticking to the end of your wand. <laughs> oh, John, sorry you were late on that. It's Chad. Yeah, I was just trying to get Ken Jennings over there to shut up for a second so that I could answer. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to go with a curing light barrier sleeve and take That's, that, Ken. That way to... <laughs> Way to cut John's condom off at the pass. Thank you very much for uh, getting that out. Chad, the board's yours. Uh, let's go with uh, does size matter, Ken, for a 1,000. 
High intensity curing lights, so greater than 1400 milliwatts per square centimeter, can cause surface temperature increases of up to 112 degrees Fahrenheit. But research has shown that pupil, pupil necrosis is associated with this more modest temperature increase. Uh, Josh. Uh, what is the temperature right now in San Antonio, which is 42 degrees Fahrenheit? Is it really? It is. Wow, it was like 144 weeks ago. Congratulations. Yeah. Does that sound like a lot or a little to you that we're raising, that we're routinely kind of raising pulpal temperatures or might be in that range from curing lights or now, that sounds like a, sounds like a lot, lot, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, I mean, that's a lot. And uh, so it's actually kind of controversial whether or not they start to die, but there's kind of this landmark uh, research that was done a while ago that everybody relies on, even though some of it seems to contra contradict uh, what that was saying. John, go ahead and pick for me if you would. Um, let's go with um, Vista Apex for 1,000, please. Ooh, way to go for the big ones. This Vista Apex chief dental officer carries himself with the demeanor of the Dalai Lama, but buys cars and planes like Jay-Z. John, you guessed it earlier. I think it's going to be right now. What is Mike DiTola? No, no, I'm not <laughs> No, you're confusing me with somebody else. No, somebody guessed it. Yeah, Troy. Who is Dr. Michael Miyazaki? That is correct. And just to make him jealous, did you guys see that uh, Drake bought a 767 for $112 million and renamed it Air Drake? A 767? You guys, that's a wide body airplane. That's, Good Lord. Uh, that's um, Mike's next purchase, though. So Wasn't he an uh, orthodontist before he, he went into entertainment? Drake? Yeah. <laughs> No, but he, nobody. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, I don't know why we all didn't, you know, go into orthodontics. It's uh, a call it professional jealousy when you walk in somewhere and see the staff doing 98 uh, percent of the work. And, you know, the orthodontist is just coming with like a, a wooden tongue depressor to like look in really quick and then say, ooh, uh, hey, Halloween's coming up. You want to go with alternating uh, black and orange elastics? Or you want to do all black on the top, orange on the bottom? I you help me with this. That's, I, <laughs> this Even an orthodontist could benefit from the pink wave. Is that correct, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah, anybody who's curing any composite can uh, can benefit from uh, uh, the pink wave. It, uh, yeah, it's it'll it'll help anybody. Endodontists love it. Um, let's see who's picking. Uh, let me look at the scores: fifty-eight, eighty-three, forty-nine. Troy. Uh, let's try Vista Apex for eight hundred, please. This Vista Apex executive team member recreated <laughs> David Letterman's iconic 1997 Velcro wall jump at a local bar. However, instead of having a nationwide audience, this executive had four friends who pulled a prank on him, leaving the bar, leaving this exec stuck to the wall for an excruciating 20 minutes because he had to use the restroom. And boom, there it is. And uh, that looked like fun, but he had professionals to take him down. Which exec was stuck on the wall for uh, 20 minutes? Josh, uh, who's Scott Lamarin? Who is C the CEO Scott Lamarin? That um, you can only do that to Scott two or three times though. By the fourth time, he catches on, and he will not do that. These same four friends, I uh, asked them to go skydiving this weekend. I'm trying to tell them it's probably not a good idea to go with these guys anywhere. And Josh, um, why don't you uh, why don't you go next? Give me barrier sleeves for a thousand, Mike. The oldest known barrier sleeves were condoms sold by Dutch traders in the 18th century made from this material. John. What is leather? That is correct. And the expression back in the day was, hey, man, can I borrow a leather? That was, uh, uh, you'll see all the Dutch were saying it to each other. And uh, Troy, close us out with this last clue, if you would. Well. If you are curing two composites that are identical in size, but one is shade A4 and one is shade A2, it takes this percent increase in curing time to cure the A4 restoration. Wow. <laughs> Chad. Um, what is an A3 restoration collectively? Oh. Wow. I get what you're going for, but we're looking for a percentage number. That is a percentage. It's A3. <laughs> Josh? Uh, what is 50%? A little high. Troy? What is 25%? little high. Ah. It's, cl it's closer to 30. John? 
What is 31%? Close enough. 30. That's how close it was to 30. Was that is. Okay, uh, guys, I need you to wager. It's time for Final Jeopardy. Believe it or not, this rousing game is coming to an end. <laughs> oh, heck. Take a look and tell me. As uh, Ashley's going to enter your amounts. I'll go one by one. Chad, what would you like to wager on Final Jeopardy? I, I would like to wager 4,301. All right. <laughs> and now who's calling who? Ken Jennings, dude. Uh, John? <laughs> Uh, I'll go an even 4,000. 4,000? Ooh. Josh? I, this isn't real money. Give me all of it. 5,300. Okay. Oh, this so just in. 5,700. Oh, wait. Scott Lameron. Yeah. Oh, this is real money. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Troy, go ahead. Way to go. I'm all in. I'm all in on Scott's money. You're all in? Okay. All right. Enter it. All right. Here we go. And don't Google this. You got to answer right away. With its quad wave technology, the pink wave cures everything, as does the iconic pink lady, according to some. A gin, a gin-based cocktail, which gets its pink color from grenadine, a sweet syrup made from this fruit. Where's the music? It's a one-word answer. I told you that before. How much you want to bet that Josh writes fluky because it's a fruit? All right, ding, ah, buzzer. All right, let's start with uh, Troy with $4,800. Troy, what did you say? I went with pomegranate. Good Lord, that is absolutely correct. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> that is insane. Way to Google faster than I could catch up with you. <laughs> Uh, Chad, you, uh, you've got uh, $5,800. I can't see what you wagered, but what'd you say? Cherry. Good guess. That's what Ashley said. I don't know what that brings you to. We're going to have to hit the button and see, or Ashley's doing the math. Josh, what do you think? Cherry. Okay. And, uh, John, what is what? Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Yeah, you know, Troy didn't ask it the form of a question, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh. let you go. Thank oh, look you. at this! Okay, look at this! Look at that! Oh! oh, Ken Jennings, John Flukey, with the win. John, <laughs> would you like to hear what you've won? Um, sure. Why not? You're wearing it. It's the pink wave shirt. Oh, hey! <laughs> yeah, can congratulate. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we need you to throw that away. We've had a uh, that. Can you have a shredder near you? <laughs> we, know, we've, had, we've had a logo redesign it's now vista apex ashley did a lot of hard work creating that brand that shirt um do you have a kerosene and a match or anything next to you we've oh yeah I've got a, out with the old in with the new i've got, well, a, once, I've got a laser here that'll burn anything so uh, <laughs> yeah yeah you were supposed to bring your 20 year old prototype that was the size of an amc pinto to kind of show us the history of curing lights but uh on behalf of uh, Vista Apex, well, first of all, I want to thank them for being willing to host um, something like this. Uh, if you get a chance, go onto the website, uh, check out the Pink Wave. I think Ashley's going to put something in the chat window where you can learn more about this uh, quad wave technology. You know, and Vista Apex um, comes from a background of uh, innovation. I, I met earlier today somebody in the marketing department. She came from the engineering department. There's just a legacy of developing products, and they don't just want to come out with a product that is a me too in a category. So the pink light is not a gimmick. It's the combination of having the ultraviolet light, the blue light, the red light, and the near infrared light. It gives you pink. It just happens to be pink. So it's not a gimmick uh, for any reason. It's putting four LEDs in there and the transilluminator to make sure that you never have to, what we call in dentistry, uh, pull in Austin, where you have to see, uh, you know, a month's worth of composites come back <laughs> and redo them all. Uh, so and John, rounds. that's right. So John, Josh, Chad, and Troy, thank you guys so much for uh, being here with, uh, with us tonight. Thanks to Vista Apex uh, for hosting this. And thanks to everybody who watched and paid attention and has the chance to see this uh, in perpetuity on the website or the Vista Apex YouTube Oh, channel. terrific. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you.